Hello, and dare I say, welcome to my video. There will be a blooper at the end. Just remember that. So anyway, I don't have anything planned for this one. I'm just going to get straight into it. I have a vague idea in my head, and we'll just see how it goes. I saw a sky the other day, and I thought, well, that's nice. I didn't have my camera, so uh, I'm just going to have to sort of try and remember what it was like. It's not that difficult, really, because it was sort of like a sky. Right, uh, there may be a problem with a bit of reflection. I don't know why I have such trouble. Well, I do, actually. I live in an extremely small room. It doesn't matter what I do with the lighting, it just doesn't seem to work. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. If it looks too bad, I'll um, change it. I'll keep my eye on it. Anyway, the thing about this sky that I saw was it had this sort of bluey, purpley feel to it, uh, which is what I'm trying to do here. This is um, ultramarine, royal blue, and a little bit of Japanese red thrown in. And as you can see, I just tweaked the lighting of it. It's, um, it's a bit of a nightmare. Uh, I just need a new big studio. So, uh, interesting colours, um, and in, in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit, I'm going to put a little bit of red there. Now, this, this looks strange, but if you know my paintings, they all look strange to start with, and I fully encourage you to make yours strange as well. And let's see what else we can do. I think I'm just going to get some white. Mix it with what's on the brush, which, as I said, is ultramarine, royal blue and Japanese red. It makes quite an interesting colour, I have to say. And I'm just going to plonk that down here. And I want there to be an interesting range of colours. It was quite a, a memorable sort of sky. It just sort of, it stuck in my head. And I thought, I must paint that. So, as I usually do with my very strange memory. If I locked it in there and I've brought it home with me and now I'm going to play with it. So let's get a bit more red I think. Let's have a little bit more red there. Here we get some crazy skies in France. I'm sure you get crazy skies where you are. I've always found it interesting on the subject of skies when people say, oh, I live in big sky country. Um, uh, you know, well, the way you explain big sky country is either you live on a very flat plain or on the top of a mountain. Uh, the sky is pretty well the same everywhere. It depends how the land around you actually um, obscures some of the sky. So, interesting point for people to ponder. So when you paint a picture, you can make you can make the sky as big as you like. I can make this into an enormous sky by uh, Im implying that there's a, a slope down here, um, or that there's a completely flat horizon. Not sure what I'll do with the landscape yet. I've got a vague sort of. I, I think I want it misty. I don't want anything definite going on in there. Um, so we'll just sort of play it by ear. So there we are, we've got some sort of interesting things going on here. There will be clouds over the top of this. This is basically the, um, the backdrop of the sky without the clouds. And as I said, it was interesting. I mean, that's sort of interesting as it, as it is, quite frankly. Maybe I should stop there. I don't think so, though. I think I'll continue. As the sky got closer to the horizon, it contained more of a sort of reddy, orangey colour. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for the um, red end of the spectrum rather than the completely orange. So it's going to turn into a sort of pinky colour. And um, let's do that there. Um, 
the last video I put up, you may have, if you've seen it, you may have seen the note that I put on them, possibly Facebook. Uh, it took 24 hours to upload. So anyway, I used um, Filmora Pro as my video editor. Uh, if you are going to use it, or if you're an, I'll tell you what, if you're an expert in Filmora Pro, contact me. I'll give you some free painting lessons. I just need to know what I did, what I did wrong. The file at the end of it ended up over seven and a half gigabytes. And um, that's big. Normally my file size is about three and a half and that uploads sort of, you know, overnight. This one took 24 hours. So um, really slow, painfully slow. I was, I was beginning to lose the will to live, frankly, by the end of it. Uh, I thought it would never go there, never get there. It seemed that, you know, I was watching the counter for the first hour or so. I was sitting at my computer and I kept an eye on the counter and it went to 1% after about 10 or 15 minutes. And I thought, oh, you know, it's moving. Maybe something is happening. Uh, 15 minutes later, it went to 2%. And I thought, well, this is getting beyond a joke. I am a person with a lot of patience, but that really tested it. So anyway, there we go. As you can see, that's how quickly you can get a reasonable sky with very few colours. Uh, we're not there yet, though. We're going to do a few more little things to that. When I find the tube of Japanese red, it's always the same, isn't it? It's the other side of my palette. And if I reach across, will I actually contact the palette with my clothing? I didn't this time, but it will get me eventually. Considering the amount of paint, actually, I've got very little paint on my clothes. So there's always the odd spot or two. But most importantly, um, there is none on the cat. The cat is sometimes in here when I paint, but um, mostly she's uh, in her own room. Yes, the cat has its own room, which is over there. And uh, why not? I think a cat deserves its own room. She hasn't done much in the way of decorating, but it's a nice room. Now, let's see, what should we do? As, as we get closer to the horizon, it's going to be a very shallow horizon. I think I'm going to put a line of light. So we'll just do that. We'll just put a line of light across there. It doesn't have to be exactly level, but as level as you can get it. What, it, it, it depends what you're going for, really. I mean, I, because I don't really know even what the landscape will be yet, um, there's no point in me planning that bit. So what do I need to do up here? Right, I'll show you in a moment. Um, let's have something like, I think, there. Now, it's not necessarily a cloud. It may look like a cloud, but it could just be a, a, a change in the in the sky behind the clouds, because even that can fluctuate in tone occasionally. So, as you can see, I'm not really too concerned about what this looks like at the moment. Let's just get the paint on. And, and in fact, I'll tell you what, here's, a, here's, a, here's an idea. It's not that I worry about it later. I don't worry. I think that's the thing that makes a lot of these paintings work, is that don't worry. It's not worth worrying about far more important things to worry about. And even then, try not to worry about them because it doesn't do any good. It just means, there's a great saying actually, if you worry today about tomorrow, then you've wasted today. And I'll tell you something, the older I get, the more I actually believe that. So take each day as it comes. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some um, Payne's Gray, of, of which I have lots on my palette and um, I'm going to mix that with a bit of white. Payne's Grey with, uh, same again, a bit of Japanese red and not a lot of oil. And what I'm going to do over this is going to, oh, but before I do that I just had a thought. 
this happens. Every now and then I have a thought. I'm just going to do this a few times. It's a great big brush. All I'm doing is just, I'm putting streaks on at the moment, but that's okay. They will go like so. Just going to do a little bit of that, a bit of vattery. Just pull the paint around a bit, just sort of blur what I've got a little bit. There we are. Hardly any paint actually coming off on the brush, just a touch. And um, now I've got this uh, other smaller brush here, and I've got the Payne's Grey with um, white and a Japanese red. And what I'm going to do is put some clouds over what you're seeing there, so that these are like little clouds um, just catching the light, which is probably going to be disappearing down there somewhere. And um, just sort of reasonably light and airy. I, I, I do listen to comments uh, on YouTube. Someone said, in all seriousness, why are your paintings so full of doom and gloom? Well, um, it depends. It depends how you see things, really, I suppose. I don't see it that way. I see, I see drama. Um, doom and gloom, I suppose, to me, is completely different. It's like, um, I don't know, a scene from a horror film. And I, I don't think I'm quite there yet with that sort of look. Uh, I just like nature showing its strength, I suppose. And uh, so I'm just mixing up a little bit more of that colour, slightly uh, on the darker side. Um, yeah, I like, I like drama. I just don't like um, boring skies. They've got to have a little bit of drama and a bit of movement in them. And uh, as you probably figured, uh, when I saw this sky, it was evening. And uh, quite an interesting effect with the way the light hits the bottom edges of the clouds. Uh, I'll be adding those in a minute. But what I want to do first of all is get the dark bits in and then put the light on them afterwards. So the, but the thing about this cloud, now I always say when you paint clouds, it must go off the edge of your painting. This particular cloud that I saw, if I actually looked at it and you know held my hands up and framed what I was going to memorize, um, it didn't go off out of the picture. It did on one side, which was up, up there, but it didn't here. Uh, over this side, it just sort of petered out. So that's what I think I might do for this one. But it, it, it's not something you should make a habit of. It's always better uh, for the clouds to actually go off the edge. It's just uh, more natural. And um, it's, uh, it adds a certain uh, professional look to your painting. If they, you know, how can I put it? Um, the, you know, there's a style of painting called the naive style. Um, which is quite stylized, I suppose. Uh, it's almost decorative sometimes, like the sort of thing you might see painted on a floor tile or, I don't know, something like that, but um, where everything is composed within the picture so that it ends within the uh, edges of your uh, image. Um, but if you want a painting that's got a certain amount of realism, you, you know, you've got to be real and you've got to do what nature would do, and that is the clouds would, would go off somewhere else, out of the picture, like so. Much more realistic. Okay, so, I was thinking of calling this, well, and maybe I will. Um, I, what I wanted, I had this idea, you see, I, 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 my brain jumps about all over the place sometimes. And um, the idea I had was to convince people to, uh, to look, stop, and see. Now by that I mean first of all when you look at something that you're going to paint don't just look at it. Stop. Now this refers to the actual painting process too. And actually see it. Don't just look at it. See it. Understand what it is you're looking at and how it's working and what it, what it is that makes what you're looking at so attractive that you might want to paint it. 
it has to have has to have that sort of sort of charm about it. So what you do is you, you stop and you look. Then you really see the structure and the movement that is before you. And then um, you, you, you see it. How can I put it? It's very hard to explain. You've got to see the real it before you can comfortably stylize it. The stop bit can also refer to, uh, as you're painting, when you see that something you've done is going right, one of the hardest things to do is to actually get your brush off the painting. In other words, stop, step back, take a minute, have a look at it, see if it's really exciting you. If you, if you just put your brush on and you just keep going like this, it's going to get boring. That's the only way I can describe it. It'll start to look heavy and just laboured. Give it, give it a bit of light. Put in the odd little surprise, you know, like a little bit of, little bit of cloud going off that way. It doesn't all have to go in exactly the same direction. And um, I think you'll, you'll find it will change your style. I think this cloud here needs to be just a little bit more dense. So I'm just going to solidify that little bit there to a bigger cloud, rather than these lots of little uh, flighty sort of clouds. That's good. Looking in the camera when I do this. Okay, now um, I'm going to do a little something over here and a lot of darkness up there. Um, but the doom and the gloom, let's go back to the doom and the gloom. Um, it depends, as I said, on your take. Um, let's face it, if you, if you were out somewhere and all you had was forever just blue sky, wouldn't that get boring, apart from it being probably either very hot or very cold, depending on where you are? Um, wouldn't that be boring if you didn't actually see any cloud formation? Put a little bit of dark up there. You notice I'm using uh, occasionally the side of the brush with a slower movement to actually put the paint on. The faster you move, the less paint goes on. It's more of a flick. But this way, it's, um, it just gives you a little bit more of a solid cloud. Okay, now then, what do I need to do? Oh, I can see that, yeah. Okay, so this cloud here, bear in mind, I haven't added the white yet. There will be white. Uh, I just don't like the way that's ending, so I'm just going to feather it away a little bit. Feather those, feather this, bring that across there. Take that hair off. It's amazing how these hairs stick to the painting. Um, there we are, and in fact a little bit more dark with, so in other words, pain grey, pa pain grey, painful grey, pain's grey, with a little bit more red in it, and even more pain's grey, that's good. Uh, and I'm not adding extra oil to this. Any oil that's on there now is what was put on the board originally, so, uh, and, you know, we're not swimming in oil here. I think we should have a little bit of dark underneath that cloud thing, whatever it is, there. Okay. And I think we'll just feather the bottom edge just a little bit. Okay. So there's a little bit of a little bit of weight up in that corner. But I want to keep everything quite bright, so I'm not going to do a lot down there at the moment. In a moment in fact, in a moment, what I'm going to do is start to add the landscape. Um, but let me just have a look in my camera. Yeah, it's looking pretty, pretty cool. I had another idea, apart from this um, sky thing, I had another idea to um, paint something, which I will do soon, maybe in the next few days. Let's just put a little bit along there. That there's a little bit strong there, but it's, uh, it's okay. Um, let me think. Okay, I think we should have a little bit of dark just there. Just a little. And you'll see why in a moment.
because they'll start to work when I put the white on those dark bits okay now anything over this side what should we do I think we might just have something there can't resist it so yeah a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of cloud in a sky makes it a lot more interesting and of course particularly at the beginning or the end of the day I remember when I when I worked in magazines if I was commissioning a photographer to go and photograph uh, it was usually some country house somewhere being the magazine that I worked on um, country life magazine um, we would all well we didn't need to tell them but we would sometimes just make sure that uh, they took the pictures either first thing in the morning or last thing in the evening so that uh, the lights were more interesting uh, they usually contain a little bit more red what you don't want is stark sunlight just coming from the top that was that's just makes one of the most boring images you can ever imagine so it had to be you know in the, the golden hour in the morning and the evening sometimes called the painter's light sometimes um, I suppose in modern day the photographer's light and uh, I remember I used to um, I used to commission a very good photographer he's deceased now unfortunately um, his name was Mark Fines and he was the father of Rafe Fines and I think Joseph Fines did the, the um, superstar actors and uh, he he took the most stunning photographs and any chance I got I would commission him to do photography for me um, in fact I remember um, I think it was Joseph Fines before he was famous, he used to come into my office to deliver photographs to me. And um, very nice young chap, very polite. Right, okie dokie. So that's enough on the sky with the um, darker tones. The next thing I'm going to do is get the magic palette knife. And um, just clean it up a bit. It's not a big palette knife, it's just a small one, my size. And all I'm going to do now is just put on a little bit of light on the clouds. Um, the actual light, when I, when I remember back, had a bit of a yellow tinge to it, but I'm not going to do that in this sitting. Quite a lot of my videos that I do now, um, I break down into two parts. So this will be part one, and I hope it's going to go quite fast. You must admit, I'm not hanging about here. Um, so let's see what should we do let's just to speed it up let's just have let's just have some light uh, hitting the base of these some of these clouds not all of them just a few just to show a little bit of light reflecting up I think we'll have one up there too and I think um, let's have a bit over there making sure that I am not showing you my sweater oh I had to reply to someone the other day they said, I like your paintings, I don't like your dirty sweater. <laughs> um, so I replied, it isn't dirty, it's cat hair. And to me, there's a big difference. Cat hair is totally acceptable. So, anyway, so there's now, they look sort of just dotted at the moment, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blur them up a bit. Uh, but before I do that, though, I'm going to just put a little bit more white along the horizon, probably, I think, here let's just have a lump of white there now this is so that i can work the landscape into the sky okay that's looking okay now then clean the palette knife big brush again although i might use a different one i might use this one this one's slightly flatter has it got blue on it it's blue colored but it's uh, it's been cleaned it's just blue always stains bristle um, quite strongly so here I'm just going to go across the white with this big brush hardly touching it this is a bit that I think some people have trouble with um, it's it's the most unbelievably light touch so that you you hardly move any paint you see there that dark bit over the edge there um, if I that's quite wet paint but if I just barely touch it it doesn't do much it's it's uh, quite a slow 
process in a way. It's quick in some ways, but it's slow in others. The lighter you touch it. So now, this is the bit I really enjoy because you never quite know what will happen. You get an idea, but obviously, until you do it. And when you've done it a few times, give it a wipe. So if there's any paint on there that I don't want, it's coming off as I wipe it. Okay. a little hint for you. If you're doing that and you touch the brush on it and you get a line like that, which I'm sure you can see, that one, okay? It's not the end of the world. Nothing is the end of the world until the end of the world comes. So this is just a very minor thing, which I've done deliberately to show you. Rather than work just on that to try and smooth it, you will make it worse. The thing to do is to start over there and then come across like so. And that way everything keys in together. So I haven't left a big stain where that mark was. I can still see it a little bit, but um, now I can't. Okay, so let's have a look. Next. I think it's actually time to go onto the landscape because I really am trying to get this video down to I don't know, perhaps half an hour, but who knows. When I paint, I lose track of time. So now on to the landscape. And for that, I'm going to use um, good old sap green and uh, red ochre. Not much red ochre, just a little tiny amount because I want it green rather than red. And in fact, to that, I'm going to add a little bit of blue. Uh, ultramarine blue, to be specific. So we're going to end up with quite an interesting colour. It'll be blue. <laughs> it'll be blue with a bit of green in it. So it'll be slightly on the green end of the spectrum. To start with it'll be quite strong but I'll work on it uh, to tone it down and all I'm going to do is just suggest something. So rather than draw um, anything too definite it'll just be the most vague bumps. So first of all we start off with that. Okay so I've managed to put everything on a hill and that is because I'm trying to stand over to the side, so I'm going to overcompensate that a little bit and just take the line back and raise it up on the right. So it should be um, reasonably better, slightly anyway. But it, it, this is all changing anyway, so I'm do a little bit more and a little bit more, like so. So what I'm after. Uh, is, is going to be a blur between the land and the sky, which is something that I've always liked. Because there are days when you just can't see where one begins and one ends. So I'm going to get a little bit of white and a little bit of a little bit more green. So I think I've gone a little bit too far on the blue side, but it doesn't matter. I keep saying that, don't I? It doesn't, nothing matters really. Okay, so there's a nice variation there and then back along there for one more run before I uh, I won't be using this for the sky anymore but I can use it for the land so um, this is what I'm going to do now it's slightly different in that I'm going to use the edge uh, rather than the flat side I'll use some of the flat side obviously but quite a lot of the tip and all I'm going to do is bring the two together like so So you may notice I started really low. It's not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not bothering with the rule of thirds on this painting. Uh, it's going to be the rule of, um, I don't know, almost eighths. Oh, no, hang on, I'll work it out. One, two, three, four, five. It's the rule of fifths. I'm using the bottom fifth. Okay, so nice, nice 
blur coming up this time. Like so. That's quite a soft blur. Don't know whether it looks too too like too much like that to you, but uh, it will. Um, and so now what I want to do, this is where I start to get a little bit of red ochre and the sap green, because I want it slightly darker now. But not much darker, just a little bit. And these are I'm turning it into a colour that I wouldn't normally use. It's a sort of pasty, slightly off, I don't know, muddy, greeny, slightly icky. No, it's not icky. Uh, but I'm just putting in things. Now, something happened there, which is quite interesting to me. Way down over here, I've got the blurred bit of the sky and then I've got a light line there. I quite like it, so I'm going to leave it. I may not keep it forever, but for now, we are staying. Let's get some tone. Not much oil in this. There's quite a lot of dry paint there. Depending on what you want, you see, that could almost be enough for a painting, because that could be light on the water. It's not, but it could be. Now, I'm going to just introduce a tiny bit of oil, because I want to make some, um, do a few wipes in this next bit. And I'm just going to fill that all in with this colour. Maybe, the, yeah, I think there's a few things there that I might leave white. Some, some, I, some are actually, you know, happy little accidents. You know, that's, that's quite attractive. That, I, mean, I know it's just a spot, but you'll understand later. That and this and that little spot over there, who knows, could be something. Um, yeah, I like that. Now, I've, I've had second thoughts about this bottom area here. I'm going to raise this up just a little bit here because it was it seemed sort of okay but now I'm, I'm not so happy with it it done it done <laughs> it did nothing to offend me except I changed my mind and with paintings I am fickle now let's have a bit of solid there uh, let me think let's go, I'm gonna just do something a little bit brazen here I just happen to have some yellow ochre on my palette, so I'm just um, going to experiment a bit. I've got a little bit on the brush there. I'm just going to put a bit in there and figure out what to do with it a bit later. Now, something else uh, which um, I don't know whether you see it, it's quite small, and these are the things you need to look out for. If you're doing this sort of kind of, uh, I suppose, intuitive painting, but there's a there's a little hump sticking up there. Um, I'll, I'll, I've just touched the painting. I'll try and um, I'll zoom in and show you that once I get my fingerprints off it. That happens from time to time. Um, but I'll, uh, I'll zoom in on that in a minute when I've finished doing what I'm doing. Um, I think, ooh, let me see. I quite like this yellow ochre. So I'm going to put some down there right in the foreground like that and I think a bit more just over there slightly stronger and back to the uh, darker green color so I'm just wiping the residue off the brush as usual, without turpentine, just to um, get the get the really loose paint off. I, I really quite like the effect when you have a brush that's already got something on it, uh, and then you um, you add other colours, and it just does something to the, to the painting. It it uh, it starts to, I suppose, push you in the area of. Um, how do I put it? Accidental painting almost. You have to think think of it that way. Okay, so I'm going to just put... Uh, I can't resist it. I have to do these weird shapes. 
somewhere. You know, these sort of humpy tree things. Humpy trees? <clears throat> Humps of trees. As opposed to trees hump, hump, no, I don't know. Anyway, let's just put that on. Now, here's something that I'd really have to tell people. Pe and I don't, this is not to offend, this is to teach. People send me paintings and they do things like this, okay? And then they do one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. They repeat it all over the painting. Always remember that less, it sounds really like one of these, I don't know when it started, less is more. I don't remember when I first saw that, but I think it was back in the, or heard that, it was back in the 80s, you know, when your designers were talking about their designs and trying to convince whoever it is, the client, to go for a minimal look. They'd say, oh, well, less is more. Um, and quite often the client <laughs> would look as if they understood. I'm sure a lot of them didn't. But there is something in it. Um, you, you don't have to overstate. You can keep things simple so that you just achieve your objective. In other words, you say enough to basically get the message over. Now here, if I'm out of the way, I'm putting the brush, I'm really pushing the brush in because I want some paint to come off the brush because I want another dark bit there. It's not very brazen, it's quite, uh, quite subdued, but it, it'll give the impression that I'm trying to convey. And um, I'm going to get some sap green without much else on it. So all these colours are piling up on this brush, but I know which side uh, the brush has got more uh, of a certain colour. Now you can't see much of that there. That's got more green, that's got a little bit more yellow, and over the other side it's got a slightly pasty green. So I want the dark green, which is here. And um, all I'm going to do is connect that to the land, bring it down there. I want, a, I want some kind of dark line. This is actually quite reddish. And I think I'll let some of the red show through. But over here now, I'm going to keep it, once I get out of the way, keep it reasonably flat. This is, this is almost um, abstract painting this, but not quite, because it looks like something. Am I a big fan of abstract art? Don't ask me. Anyway, uh, let's see. I'm going to get some Payne's Grey into the green now. And just put in a few shapes that don't necessarily mean much, but they are just in the landscape, just the odd touch. Now this thing here, which I'm, I'm going to zoom in in a moment, uh, zoom in on in a moment even, um, after I've done this bit. All I'm going to do is just strengthen it a bit. Now it's up to you what you imagine that is. Could be buildings, could be trees, who knows. But anyway, let's zoom in and have a look and you can see how simple it actually is. It's just to give an impression of something. So looking at that, it could be, as I said, it could be a town, it could be, uh, who knows, it could just be a blob on the landscape. So now, very quickly, I'm just going to use a piece of paper and just do a little bit of wiping and a little bit of taking away. So I'm going to, I'm probably going to keep these light bits here. I think they're okay. Uh, but I think it needs something along there. Just a line suggests something. Could be water. And then here, I'll just double check you can see where we are. Can you indeed? Not much, no. So let's move 
I'll try and move this without cutting so that it saves time. Right, what I want to do is work on the area below that bush thing in the slightly to the left of centre. This thing. And uh, as you can see by the texture of the paint underneath it, there's various things happening. This could be... Well, you can't see it. <laughs> Typical, isn't it? Anyway, I'll move the camera again in a minute. But basically down here, I want to get something in there. Something that looks as though there's a bit of light hitting the ground. So I'm going to just sort of drag this piece of paper, which... And I'm using, I'm using this sort of surface here. Not, I haven't made it into a point. All I've done is sort of crinkle it and make it into a little bit of a curve. And hopefully that'll give me the effect that I want. And it's just, uh, you know, the land changing angle a little bit there. With a bit of light catching it. If you look at uh, paintings by John Constable, look at his um, panoramics that he did, and you'll see there's evidence of this effect. Wiping and scraping. They all, they all did it. Okay, so it just adds texture to the land. Okay, now, right, uh, I'm going to attempt to just put a few more marks. So I've got a dark bit here and a dark bit just there. Can you actually see it? It's just, I have to turn around on the camera and make sure there's a little bit there. And move the camera again. Right, so what can we do in there? Right, so we've got a distant marsh catching the light here. We've got something there, could be water on a field. I think we'll just leave it as that, because it, a lot of paintings, um, you know, this, this type, leave stuff to the imagination sometimes. Not so happy about that bit. Okay, now, so what can we do to that field to make it even more... Did I hear you say boring? Possibly. Okay, let's do um, the other thing I sometimes like to do because um, and actually put in something like a line that goes the other way. So what I think what we'll do, we'll just have a line across there. So there we are. We have a path going off across the landscape. And I think we'll put uh, the odd tree in the way. Widen the path at the bottom just a little bit because obviously they do get wider as they get closer to you and then with a brush with a bit of green on it quite dry and quite lightly used because I don't want to um, sort of change anything too much it just needs the odd tree in front of it just to break it like so That's yeah, okay. Now, a um, little bit over there. Where can you see? Let's just make doubly sure you can see what I'm seeing. Good. I think we just have to have something a little bit there. Just a hint of a shape. Now, it could be way over in the distance. Way over here, it could be the sea. It may just be mist between the land and the sky. Um, the, the place where I saw this sky, obviously, uh, just, well, not obviously, but just, um, if I go out the house here and just look down the drive to the road, that was where I saw it. So I'll look out for it again tonight. It might be there. You never know. And I think I'm going to put a few little textures just in that field there because nothing is ever flat colour. If you were painting a modern farm uh, with, you know, highly tailored fields that have been squirted with something repulsive to make everything the same colour and no weeds to grow, fine, maybe that's... then you'll get it. But if it's just raw countryside, which is my sort of, I suppose, passion, 
it's going to be grass that is multi-textured. There we are. Now, I think part two of this would be just, just to add a few highlights, uh, e even if I do it part two, which I might, I might do it. A little bit of light there is quite nice. I think way over in the distance. I'm trying to keep most of the attention in here, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe when it's dry, I'll do a little bit more work on the sky. But for now, I think we are pretty well there. So I'm just going to do my usual and say, oh, my usual is not. Oops, my usual is usually um, just to remind people that I do Skype. Not Skype. Honestly, I'm such a drongo sometimes. I do Zoom lessons. Um, and uh, if you're a patron, in other words, uh, if you contribute on my patron page, you get, uh, I don't know how it works out, some, some people get a free lesson, some people get a vastly reduced lesson. I'll put a link in the box below as usual. Um, but the, the Zoom classes are, uh, and I'm not exaggerating, and this is not just to make money. Um, I actually enjoy teaching. I like, I like the look that suddenly comes across people's faces when they realise that they can do this. And uh, so that's my motive, and it is totally genuine. I just enjoy it. So anyway, yes, yeah, so let's get back to reality here. The, Zoom lessons are me painting for an hour, talking for up to, <laughs> I think the record is, it might be three hours actually, it's turning into a bit of a sort of club where we talk about uh, mostly painting, but you know, life, the universe, everything, all that stuff. Um, and we meet up twice a month. And it, it's really, I'm starting, re I mean, I enjoy it, but I'm sort of, I never realised it would be such fun. It's, um, it's a right to laugh. So I think that's it. Anyway, yeah, if you're interested, link below. What else? If you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do. It um, changes YouTubers' lives. The more subscribers you have, and especially if you hit the little bell icon next to it, which means that uh, you'll know when I next put up a video. And, um, whoops, I just want to put something there like so. Um, what else? Yeah, that's it really, I think. Yeah, subscribers are important because quite a lot of YouTubers, uh, it, their only source of income is actually YouTube. It, uh, it does have an impact. So let's just see before I go. I'm going to move that. I think, no, I think I should stop. So one of the points of this whole thing is, was that uh, you should look, see and stop. Or stop, see and look or I think it doesn't really matter what order they are in they all apply to art to oil painting and I'll probably do something just over there before I go so I'm going to move this so you don't have to see the revolting color of the wall or my green screen which I must get into using more which is behind the painting so right in that bottom corner while you're going and hitting on that subscribe button. Oh yeah, and comment, yeah. Comment as much as you like. I like comments. Um, they sort of make my day. Every morning I get up and I come in here and I go through my, I go through all my messages and I reply to as many as I can in the time that I've got. Can't always reply to everything. Right, so let's just resolve this bottom corner into something. So I think we'll put a bit right there. It doesn't have to be really powerful, it's just a slight touch, just to, just to get the feeling over. And I think align that way. Okay, right. And I think just the odd, I don't know what they are, just the odd thing, you know? It's just a touch with the paper just to sort of get the eye, get your eye twitching. And I think that's it. Right, I will go and leave you in peace. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching and bye for now.
Hello, and dare I say, welcome to my video. Right, no faffing about on this one. I don't know what I'm going to do, so there's no point in me sort of um, saying anything about what I have planned, because I don't have anything planned. I just have an idea in my head um, in the last few minutes. Uh, that's how you don't start a painting. Too much exuberance. Let's start again.